For the DARPA Subterranean Challenge, we're here at the Edgar Experimental Mine to conduct a Sub-T integration exercise, or what we call STIX. For the teams that were here to participate in STIX, we invited them to come along on a walking tour of the mine so they could get a glimpse of what the DARPA Sub-T Challenge has in store. For those of you who weren't able to join us at STIX, come along now. Well, let's go take a walk and I'll show you what the mine looks like inside. Before we head into the tunnel, we're going to pass through the starting gate here. The markers on the gate give the teams a specific point of reference to calibrate their navigation. We're coming into the tunnel through the Miami entrance. You'll note the overhead lighting, but you'll soon see how dramatically lighting conditions can change throughout these tunnel environments. For example, the Army entrance is not lit at all, but it also has a much wider area in which they operate. If you look at the floor, you'll see a pair of rail tracks. While they may not seem like much of an obstacle, these could really prove to be a difficult challenge depending on the robot's mode of locomotion and ground clearance. We're coming up on a second set of markers, fiducials, like the ones we saw on the starting gate. These are placed at about 25 meters into the tunnel for further navigation calibration. Teams will score points in the subterranean challenge by successfully locating and identifying specific artifacts. Coming up on the left, we'll see the first artifact that teams could find here at Styx, a fire extinguisher. Teams will be able to find more like this in the upcoming Sub-T Challenge Tunnel Circuit event. Some of these artifacts will be common among all three Sub-T Challenge domains, tunnel, cave, and urban, while others will be specific to a single subdomain. On the right is another artifact, this red backpack. You can imagine how identifying something like this would be of great value to warfighters or first responders. Some of the artifacts common among all domains are things like a cell phone playing back video and audio so it could be located by sound, or a thermal mannequin that's actually heated so teams could identify it by thermal signature. The tunnels here at Styx are long. We're talking kilometers of possible travel. And when we're looking ahead at the tunnel circuit, or tunnels where warfighters and first responders could be operating, those environments could be orders of magnitude larger. So we're going to go ahead and fast forward and highlight some other points of interest. There's another fire extinguisher on the right here. So far, these artifacts have seemed pretty obvious, right? Well, actually, we've passed at least one artifact without pointing it out, a cordless drill tucked back on the left-hand wall. And the reason we didn't highlight it is that our camera operator missed it, which goes to show you this is not easy. Even with a human in the tunnel, artifacts can slip by unnoticed. And for the Sub-T challenge, we're having competitors do this with no humans inside the tunnels. Coming up on the right is one of the cell phone artifacts we mentioned earlier. It's mounted to an external battery pack so it can run all day playing a video continuously on a loop. If you've been following the Sub-T Challenge and the videos we've been putting out, you might recognize the video we chose. All right, we're zooming ahead again. Here's where things start to get a little more complex. This is the first intersection we've come across in the tunnel, and we're going to take a peek to the right. As you can see, those rails go away and the ground gets a little trickier. As the space gets more and more confined, that nice overhead lighting isn't around anymore. We're throwing on headlamps so you can see for the purposes of this video, but without those, it gets dark pretty quickly back here. We've got obstacles, we've got low clearance, we've got ground that is decidedly not nice and level. We've got quite a confined little space back here. This is a challenging environment for a human to traverse, and it gets even tighter. But here we're close enough to see the artifact, tucked away back there, another red backpack. All right, so ducking out of here, did you see that dust kicking up? Here's another angle on the ground we just walked up. Lots and lots of places to get tripped up or stuck. Okay, so let's pick up the pace again. And here we've come to another intersection, and we're heading right again. Don't be alarmed, that's not a person lying there. That's another one of our artifacts, one of the thermal mannequins we mentioned earlier. You can imagine the utility of being able to locate and identify a human in a disaster response or search and rescue type of operation. Up to this point, all the artifacts we've seen here have been at the ground level or low on walls. But one of the things that makes tunnels an especially challenging environment is their verticality. It's not just about front to back, side to side, but also up and down. Take for example this ladder, 
which leads to a small alcove that contains another artifact. Tunnels can consist of multiple levels, each spanning vast distances. That's another point of consideration for teams, as they plan for the Sub-T Challenge tunnel circuit. And moving on, we're going to pass by another cell phone artifact, move through some different lighting conditions, and from here, we're leaving the overhead lighting behind for a while. Again, we're using our headlamps for the video and safety, but without those, it's basically pitch black. Another big challenge with these tunnel environments is dust. It can hang around in the air, inhibiting vision, or obscuring sensors. In many cases, merely traveling through an area can kick up dust, compounding the difficulty as you go. At various points throughout the tunnel at Styx, we actually installed fog machines like these to simulate those dusty or smoky environments. You'll also see just behind the fog machine another artifact, a cordless drill, which emphasizes that it's not just about being able to move through the environment, but also to perceive, locate, and identify objects of interest. It might be hard to tell here, but as we're following these rails up, we're actually on a little bit of an incline. It's more obvious as we get to the top here and look down. Depending on the direction you're coming from, that little ridge could prove to be quite a hurdle. Again, these tunnels cover a lot of ground. It's not really obvious on camera, but at this point, we're heading up a pretty significant incline here in the tunnel. That metal grate flooring up ahead will give us a nice view down below and it'll be a nice reminder of just how much these tunnel environments can be displaced vertically. If you look closely, you'll see another artifact down there, one of the cell phones. We had to skip recording the climb down, but now we're on the same lower level where we just saw that cell phone. Down here we're going to see more industrial type equipment all around, which could be both physical obstacles for robots as well as perception challenges as they offer vastly different profiles to the nearby rock walls. Our camera operator did not miss the drill artifact hidden just behind the doorway. Off to the right here is a small room, which seems like it would be a good place to hide an artifact. But as you can see, the search here will come up empty. That's another point of consideration for teams. How do you weigh when it's time to move on versus looking for another 10 seconds, 30 seconds, 5 minutes? Here's another example of tricky terrain. We've got long rubber tubing, small rocks, large rocks, a tarp-covered mound, and several lengths of large piping. As you can see, just beyond all that is yet another artifact. Here's another fire extinguisher. And on the way back, we'll take a closer look at just how tough that terrain is. Now granted, we're making this a little tougher with all the fast forwarding, but with all the twists and turns, it's easy to lose your sense of direction or bearing, and that could be even tougher for a robot. I'm just gonna let the camera roll for a bit, so see if you can spot some of these artifacts before the camera does.
There's another rescue Randy, thermal mannequin, sitting there to the right. Here's a closer look at the video playing back on the cell phone. That light up ahead at the end of the tunnel is the army portal, the other way into the mine. This just highlights that there's often more than one way to enter tunnels, and how you go in may not be the same way you come out. Up ahead you can see some members of the DARPA team who are collecting reference data sets that could potentially be used by competitors to help benchmark their approaches. You can see the same type of distal fiducials here that we saw back over on the Miami side. Thanks again for joining me on this walking tour of the Edgar Experimental Mine for the Sub-T Integration Exercise. We're very excited about what we've seen here at Styx and even more excited about what's to come in the upcoming circuit stages for the DARPA Sub-T Challenge. Thanks again.